cabinet positions would you eliminate? Well, I'm from Missouri, and we love our guns and our whiskey, which is why I think that the ATF, the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms industry, ought to be a store, not a government agency. <laughs> the President of the United States does actually have the authority to effectively end one institution of the federal government, and that's the DEA, and here's how. We can end the federal war on drugs by instructing the chief of the DEA to set the federal drug schedule of all drugs to zero. This would effectively... This would effectively kick the war on drugs back to the states, and uh, we could have the DEA that way. Let's turn our attention to foreign policy. Mr. McAfee, what do you think of the Iran deal? Does it pose a threat to Israel, and if so, is that a concern of America? The Iran deal, where we pay an enemy hundreds of billions of dollars to do what? Build weapons, systems, and ideas to destroy ourselves? We need to get out of the internal affairs of all foreign nations, I'm sorry, and bring our troops home and stop giving military aid. Thank you. Mr. Perry, the Iran deal. Despite the fear-mongering, Iran and the companies within Iran were not trying to build nuclear weapons, they were trying to build nuclear energy. The Iran deal allows them to continue doing that, however, there's a lot of U.S. taxpayer money that goes to Iran, so there are parts that are good, parts that are bad. I've not read the document, so I don't know if the good outweighs the bad, but probably not. Governor Johnson, the Iran deal. Uh, on the surface, I initially supported the Iran deal. It just made sense, but this may just sound crazy, but it turns out that Iran is categorically proven to finance terrorism. They are the number one financiers of terrorism around the world, and, if we, and because we released $165 billion, Secretary of State Kerry himself admitted that some of this money would go to terrorism. No, we should not have signed the Iran deal. We should have not unfrozen those assets. We could have engaged in free trade on an ongoing free trade basis, but no, to have released that $165 billion, uh, there will be terrorism funded out of that. Mr. Peterson. Well, here comes the wonky journalist who's actually done the research here. The Iran deal was problematic because it was an executive agreement and not an act of Congress. The Senate is supposed to approve and ratify treaties, not the President. Congress authorized the President to make it. No, I, I believe, I believe that we should, we should have free trade with all countries, despite what their status is. Why? Because capitalism brings down tyranny around the world. Dr. Feldman, the Iran deal. Behind the Iran deal are two groups of people crazy, irrational hatred of each other are putting the whole world at risk of war. I'm talking about Democrats and Republicans. <laughs> we have plenty of issues here to deal with and plenty of people to trade and help around the world uh, before dealing in the military adventures of other areas. Thank you. Mr. Perry. President Obama has called the Hiroshima bomb an act of evil. Do you agree? Absolutely. Whenever you nuke a large city and kill, what was it, millions of people, that's absolutely deplorable. President Obama was the first U.S. president to go to Hiroshima since the bombing. However, he did not apologize, and I will as soon as possible. Governor Johnson. Obama called the Hiroshima bomb evil. Do you agree? I don't want to judge actions that happened so many years ago. Uh, President Truman was faced with an obviously difficult situation based on millions of lives having been lost. I don't want to second guess in any way. One of the questions that I have regarding the bomb was, one bomb was dropped. What were the, and perhaps this is in history and I'm just not aware of it, but after one bomb was dropped, why was there not as much outreach as possible to have prevented the second bomb, but uh, I, I'm not second-guessing here. Difficult decision made in difficult times. 
and millions of lives had been lost, and so many of those lives were American lives. And we'd have lost hundreds of thousands of more American lives if we'd have had to go in there. Mr. Peterson, the promotion of the bomb was called evil by President Obama. Do you agree? Hey, no offense. You start it, I'm going to end it. Let me tell you something. When it comes to the bomb, the bomb is just like any other weapon. Just like a tool, like a drone, or a gun, or anything like that. If you face an existential threat, you have the right to defend yourselves. And under no circumstances would I ever endanger the national security of the citizens of the United States. That being said, the Japanese were killing 6,000, 6,000 civilians a month. 6,000 civilians a month, the Bataan Dutch death march and the rape of Man King. We have a right to defend ourselves using any means necessary. Absolutely. Dr. Phil. Often who is evil and who is desperately trying to survive depends on which side of the gun you are on. Unfortunately, you have to do what you have to do. Whether it's evil, I don't know, but there is suffering, tremendous suffering, and I wish that it was not necessary, as I'm sure everybody does. The question is, what is the president going to do? And there are tough decisions to be made that have to be made. We have to make a safer and more peaceful world where we take care of each other instead of fighting with each other. Mr. Matthew. An apology costs nothing, and what might it buy? Please, this is not an emotional issue. We have, we have someone who felt offended. Good Lord, have you never apologized to your spouse for something you can't even remember doing? <laughs> so what does it cost, what does it gain? Please. Governor Johnson. Do you believe radical Islam poses a threat to Europe, America, to Western civilization itself? I'm sorry? Do you believe radical Islam poses a threat to Europe, to America, to Western civilization itself? Uh, I do. It's a very real threat. Uh, I think that Congress needs to get involved in decision making on how we address this. They have abdicated their responsibility uh, to the president and to the military, and we need an open debate and discussion on how we do deal with this, something that, like I say, has not happened. Mr. Peterson. Truly the most dangerous religion in the world is statism. Mm -hmm. But yes, classical liberalism must be defended from violent ideologies. But if we are to do so, we must do so constitutionally, and not necessarily always through force of arms. The Enlightenment must be restored, and classical liberal thinking must be defended. And I say that if we are going to fight radical Islam as President of the United States, we must do so within the law, constitutionally, and never go outside the powers of the executive branch. Only go to war if there is a declaration of war. Otherwise, letters of mark and reprisal, and that is the only way that the President has any authority to defend the United States using the U.S. military. Dr. Feldman, does radical Islam pose a threat to Europe, America, and to Western civilization? There is no Islamic terrorism. There are Muslim terrorists. We need the people to take the blame, not a religion. Terrorism is not a war, it's a crime. We know how to fight crime, we fight them as criminals. Terrorism, of course, poses a threat. But there's a far greater threat, and that is the actions of our government, government which created this terrorism. We drop bombs on families, on hospitals, on innocent people as well as perhaps the guilty. My God, you would be angry too. You would be frustrated and what would you do? So if, if we are the source of the problem, the biggest threat to us is our government, please. We must stop our own aggression. We, the members of the Libertarian Party, rise in opposition to the cult of the omnipotent state. 
Tyranny is tyranny and hides behind many religions, but the tyrants are doing the hiding. Freedom is the answer, not more government, not blaming people's religion because tyranny is the problem.